Hey, I worked really hard for everything in this room and I'm so excited to share it with you. Welcome to my digital art and streaming studio tour. Let's back up to the entrance, which is still technically a work in progress, as I plan to frame out this doorway so it looks more polished, but I absolutely love these sliding doors from Home Depot, and they and everything else will be linked in the description below. When you first come into the right, I have a set of shelves I built. You may recognize them from my last video. I built a few for the house, and I stacked some more frequently used things I didn't want always in the frame of videos, but wanted quick access to. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil foxes on another mini shelf I built. My very first and only Nendroids on some corner shelves. I'm holding off on buying more of these until we properly move to Japan as I hear the secondhand stores are pretty amazing. The magic witchcraft computing box. I decided to go pre-built this time as it was a pretty good deal. For those who don't know, I'm a Jessica Negri stan. Welcome to my shrine. Some laminated hiragana and katakana learning charts. Aren't these adorable? This is not the best mic in the world, nor is it the worst, but it's a nice budget option, and I opted for this mounted setup when it started interfering with my desk space and drawing tablets. Webcams are stupidly priced right now, and my dad had a spare Logitech C920 he was willing to part with, so thanks, dad. I'd like to upgrade to using a proper camera down the road, but we're just not there yet, and the C920 is plenty good for what I need. I keep my wireless cat ear headphones, their case, and my iPad case here to protect my cats from the computer wires. Here he is, my big daddy Wacom 22. I won't spend a lot of time here because I have an entire video with more coming dedicated to this thing, but yeah, I love you, Wacom. My Steel Series Arctic 7 wireless headphones. I have no complaints about these, and for the price, I think they're the best bang for your buck. Super comfortable, great sound quality, and can walk around doing tasks while still hearing your friends in Discord. In case you were wondering about this arm I have the Wacom on, I have a whole dedicated video already filmed I'll be editing soon about this. Overall, it's difficult to set up if sent to you with the tension cranked up super high, but it's worth it to me for the savings and ergonomic factor to deal with temporary frustration at unboxing. I have a three monitor setup. Two of the monitors are actually quite old and I had to get special mounting plates for them because their bases are not VESA, but I'm happy with the money I saved by using my seven-year-old monitors as my secondaries versus buying all new. The center monitor was gifted to me, so my monitor setup was actually quite affordable and just cost me the price of all the wall mounts. Here, I keep things I need handy while streaming or working, some lip balms, eye drops, notepads, sticky notes, and all Rilakkuma, of course. After seven years, my last keyboard finally started to wear out. I upgraded to this Razer Black Widow Elite gaming keyboard, and I love that the color changing is completely customizable. Simple addition, but I got this upright wireless charger for my phone so I could use it while streaming or working easily. My mouse is fairly mid-range, and I've had no issues with it. It's the Logitech G305. The 2019 Apple iPad Pro is by far one of my favorite tech purchases ever and my very first iPad. It's been awesome learning to use Procreate as it's so intuitive and being able to draw while traveling while also having it be multi-use is added a lot of value to my life, made it possible for me to upgrade the rest of my equipment via art commission revenue I earned while using it. I plan on continuing to use it in my creative process and I know it will last me a long time before I need to replace it. If you're on the fence about one, I definitely recommend it for people starting out as well as for people who want it to supplement their existing setups. This Belkin iPad pen holder accessory is admittedly completely unnecessary, but if you're like me and misplace your iPad pencil a lot, having a dedicated space for it to rest while you work can be very helpful as it doubles as a great travel case to store your spare nibs. I live in Texas and it gets incredibly hot here. I spend a lot of time researching every purchase I make and the simple fan is no different. I definitely recommend it if you have a workspace that can get pretty warm but you still want it to be relatively quiet. Now to lighting. I got all of these lamps from Walmart actually and the color changing bulbs from Amazon but similar things can be found on both sites. It's pretty dark in this room and I like that but you do need a bit more light when working so these have helped a lot. The color changing strip lights are from Gobi and while I've used a fair bit of string lights in the past I will be a faithful Gobi supporter going forward for the quality of their product, their amazing app, and their customer support when I access accidentally damage my strips. I keep my SD cards and a spare camera battery here for easy access next to my editing laptop. Of course, I have an Alexa. She likes to talk to me even when I haven't said anything to her. I'm really polite so that when they take over in the future, they may spare my life. I keep our SNES Classic Mini here. I had to reserve one from GameStop during the purchase frenzy a few years back, and it's been one of Christian's most used favorite nostalgic consoles. We take it on trips with us sometimes too because it's so compact. Then we pan over to some really amazing art. I will be linking to every artist you see in this video with their stores if I can find them in the description down below. 
I make it a habit to purchase from artists regularly at conventions and online because art is my passion. I want their amazing work gracing my walls everywhere, and it feels great to show support to my fellow artists in our industry. Streamlighting. I actually keep these on most of the time while working for some extra light too, but my dad actually got these for me for Christmas. I definitely recommend them and their brand. The gels can be switched out for different colors and they can be brightened or dimmed. This large Dazny one I did purchase myself as a dupe for the very expensive Elgato key light and this has definitely made a big difference in lighting for my streams. They can be brightened or dimmed as well. Where the editing magic happens. My MacBook is a beast. I didn't even get the top of the line specs or anything, and this guy has lasted me eight years. It's a late 2013 13-inch MacBook Pro with a 2.4 gigahertz dual-core Intel i5 processor. He's slowed down now during editing, and I have been saving to upgrade to the M1 16-inch MacBook Pro when it launches, but I'll miss this guy and his multi-USB, HDMI, and HD card slots. When I edit, I take the stand my iPad is currently on and just adjust it to ergonomic height and use the wireless keyboard for my iPad case to edit via my MacBook. This cheap wireless mouse I can't really recommend, but it works and I haven't upgraded just because despite how this video may feel with all the tech, I do try to only buy things when I need them to solve a problem in my workflow or when they break from old use. So that's my cheap JTEC mouse. Staying true to form in that savings regard, this chair is very likely over a decade old and I not only have a cover on it to stop the faux leather from flaking everywhere, but I also have added Velcro armrests, two pillows, one regular and one a proper chair pillow in order to prop me up to the right height for my desk setup. I could get a pullout system for my mouse and keyboard and that would probably be better, but currently this multiple pillow and stool for my feet setup is meeting my ergonomic needs, so I've kept with this budget fix for now. I have this cheap cushion folding chair that my cats regularly sleep in while I work in this room, but it doubles as a place for friends to sit when they come visit. Since this room is so dark, I don't feel plants would thrive very well in here, so I got a multi-pack of four cute fake potted plants to go in places around the house in need of some green. Can't forget my notorious RBG calendar. The skulls in this room are actually Halloween decor I've had from over the years I just like the look of, so I leave them out year round. And the blizzard lamp I don't believe is sold anymore, doubles as a phone charger and I got for Christian years back. And we have my color changing floodlights. I got these cheaply on Amazon to add some punch to the backdrop of the room that I could change for holiday themed streams or just when I felt like it. And these have held up nicely. My boy Haku has to have a place to rest in here with me while I work too. So I got him an orthopedic doggy bed so he can be comfortable hanging with me while I stream or work. Lastly, the thing I'm most proud of as far as effort I put personally into this room is the soundproof ceiling. When we first moved here, we had four people using this room at a time, all yelling and playing video games, so I spent an entire day soundproofing the ceiling using cardboard to protect it, hot glue, staples, and mini nails. If y'all want an entire video on that process, I can make one if you're interested, so please leave a comment letting me know down below. And that's it! If this was relaxing, helpful, or entertaining in any way, please hit that like button for me. It truly helps me know which videos you'd like to see more of, and lets YouTube know other people may be interested in this video too. If you're new here, hit that subscribe. I post new videos weekly, and I have videos about my experience switching from my iPad to my new Wacom coming up. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all next week. Ja, matane!